What's your biggest takeaway from last night, Joel? Well, in championship atmospheres, whether you're talking about professional atmospheres or college atmospheres, and this goes across sports, very rarely, very rarely, do you have the catalyst for the win being a coach's decision? That just it doesn't happen a lot. It's always generally, you know, one on the field. And certainly you could make a case that it was one on the field last night. But you could also make a case that in his last two national championships, the direct catalyst for the win was a Nick Saban decision. And the guts that it took to make those decisions. These were not easy decisions now. What, what, what's the first one? The onside kick it against Clemson two years ago. came with 10 minutes left. It, it was a tie that's game. Not, that's not a well, gutsy decision? it's not like decision. it changed the game at the end of the game. Well, it didn't change the game. Okay. What are we – wait, oh, no, what? Joe, before you go any further, everybody mm-hmm. heaps praise on Sean Payton for kicking onside yeah. at the start of the half. Yeah, and have what a gutsy decision. That was at the start of the half. Okay. We're talking about fourth quarter now. No, no, he said he won that, the Super Bowl. Go to take that thing away. I, all I talk hear about is Peyton Manning threw a pick six. No, the, the Super Bowl right. is the college championship. Go ahead, Joe. You the do a good. The decision to, to kick that onside kick and then the decision to say, I'm going to take my, my quarterback who's lost two games as a starter – who was an SEC Offensive Player of the Year, who got us here for the second straight year, and I'm going to sit him down next to me so that I can put out a kid that I think is good, but I really don't know. Because you don't know until those are live bullets in, in, in the heat of the battle. That is just an unbelievable decision from Nick Saban. I know that it was rumored and, yeah, it was going to be a short leash and this and that, but to actually pull the trigger, that's a remarkable decision, and it's one of the reasons why I think he is now hands down the best college football coach that we've seen in the history of our sport. (laughs) Mm. Two years ago, I was very critical of Nick Saban. I didn't Mm. think he was adjusting to the spread game. Okay, You point to that quite a bit. But he not only has adjusted, but now he has mastered the spread game as well as the power game, as well as the moxie it takes to make the big decisions in the critical times in the fourth quarter of championship football. He's had the number one recruiting glass dating back to 2011. Every single year, he's the best recruiter. He's won now with six different coordinators. His five titles at Alabama, six different coordinators. So he's doing Joel, this he always across has the, the most talent. Coach. He's yeah, got the most he talent. Yeah, because he gets it. But that's Last the thing. night, he's Ohio playing. State he got gets talent. it. Wait a second. He's, he's the playing. one that goes out there and recruits. And recruiting is part of being he's a great coach. He's freshman at the end of the game everywhere because they're better than his juniors and seniors. Georgia was playing a true freshman as a quarterback he's, as well. And they had their true good. freshman. And he beat the Heisman, and he yeah. beat the Heisman Trophy winner the yeah. week before. This guy has separated himself in every separated. single area from every other coach in our sport. And again, I was critical two years ago. He's proven me completely wrong. Mm -hmm. He's the best to ever do it in our sport. (laughs) I I think the people at home, they might not know these stats. Coach Saban, in 10 years at Alabama, 125 wins. That's 12.5 a year. Are we talking about the game last night or how good he is overall? I thought we were going to do that later. Oh, you want to do do it? I want to talk about the game with Joel. Let's get to the game now. The decision to put in Tonga Vailoa. And allow him to go down the field. Now, I don't think that the offensive game plan was very good. I thought Jalen Hurts was a scapegoat for that. Mm -hmm. Most of that blame should have gone to Brian Dable, the offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they put him in there and then let him loose. Saban at halftime says to Brian Dable, we're going with Tongo Vailoa. And we're going to let it go. We're going to go down the field. And he made some incredible throws. The defense played great in the second half. Georgia got a little bit conservative. And it bit him. Nick Saban's coaching in that game is what ultimately led to Bama winning the mm-hmm. national championship. But here's the thing, though, Skip. You keep uh, – and, Joel, you said he was scapegoated. Now, he had – last year he had uh, Lane Kiffin and he had Steve Sarkeesian and Brian Dayball. And he's gotten no better at throwing the football. If Coach Saban leaves him in that game, Alabama's not winning that game because he can't throw the football mm-hmm. effectively and efficiently enough. Mm-hmm. What happened was is that he kept going three and out, and it was yeah. wearing Bama's defense down. That's what happened to him last year. That's why they lost to Clemson. You run 99 plays. I don't care how great your defense is. It will wilt. Mm-hmm. They started getting some drives together, and that defense was coming off the coming back on the mm-hmm. field after having five, six minutes of rest. Then they started hunting. Mm-hmm. And you see what happened when they turned them loose on from a freshman. I'm a firm believer. If I'm a defensive coordinator and I'm going against a freshman, I'm not going to let him get comfortable. No. I'm going to heat him up. I'm going to give Georgia a lot of credit. They let him throw the ball early to keep Coach Saban off balance. Kirby Smart won four national championships with him. He knows what he likes to do. Mm-hmm. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to throw the ball early, then we're going to try to run it late. Mm-hmm. Coach Saban says, okay, two will get in there and do what you do. 
He started mm -hmm. spinning that ball. That defense started hunting because they were rested. And then when it's all said and done, that's the happiest. I've, of all the national championships, and I watched the last five of them, mm -hmm. that's the happiest I've seen Coach He, he said it. He said it after mm -hmm. the game. My turn. So, several of the ESPN commentators said on the air during and after the game, starting with Kirk Herbstreet, that they had been told all week that Jalen Hurts would have a very quick leash, uh, a quick hook, hook. Or a short leash. And Kirk Herbstreet said going into halftime, this kid, Tua, is special because the coaches have been telling him all week that he is special. And if you saw him at the end of the Vanderbilt game, and unfortunately I did, you want to talk about spinning the ball, he threw two touchdown passes, one to Devontae Smith mm -hmm. that foretold what we saw at the end of the game last night, and it just took my breath away. It was like the play of the year in college football. Can we see that one more time? Because I, I, that's when I sat back Spun, and said, goes, yeah, he did yeah, a 360 it there. and just whips Incredible it. Throw. Like it almost looked like a little short sidearm throw. And it just hits Devontae right in the hands. Here he is again. And throws a rocket and hits him right in the hands. Of course, it was 45 to nothing already, but yeah. he, he did it again. He threw another touchdown pass after that to another pure Yeah, but, but Skip, it's one thing to tell the – Okay, I got it. Coaches I, tell me all the time I, on I, Tuesday, I, hey, this guy's special, that okay. guy's special. It's another so, to make the but decision. But mop-up dude against Vanderbilt is something okay. entirely nice. different than the national I got championship it. game. You could see that he can throw it 100 times better than poor Jalen. Jalen can run the football now. Yeah. He's a gift. To, he's a glider, man. Sometimes he'll just take my breath away with how he glides effortlessly for 12 yards. Yes. But – He's not much of a thrower. Correct. And the problem is that Coach Saban knew in his heart of hearts, Oklahoma put up 31 in the first half on that Georgia defense. 31? And Baker Mayfield threw for 200 yards just in the first half yes. on that same Georgia How's defense. How's the trophy win a Baker okay. Mayfield? All right, but, but again, Alabama scored zero in the first half against that same Georgia defense. With Jalen Hurts, okay. who got okay. benched. So it's not that hard to say, okay, I'm going to close my eyes and go. I told you earlier – I would have given Jalen Hurts just because he would have earned it with me and my heart. I would have given him one series in the second half just to see if you flip. That's the why script. he started the game. And well, the plan was in the second half to yeah. to rotate. It's just you're see, get a series, yeah, you see gonna, what happens. As soon as you saw the spark with two of that first yeah. series, I thought, okay, not Hertz the first not series because it went three and out in the first series. But so the he, play of the game was on third, third and seven, seven in the second series. I agree. He escapes. I agree. And, and he's he looks like he's an even better runner than Jalen Hurts is. And at that point, you could you couldn't go back to Hurts. No, no. You could, the entire but, 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 energy of the team okay, was just remember what told. you had to close your eyes. And and I give Coach Saban credit for this. Okay, remember, he throws a terrible interception where nobody's open. He just forces it up into well, everybody's cover. Blocking. They're blocking. That's why they're, they're not even looking for the no. football. It's a freshman okay? mistake. So, so that's number one. Then he throws another one that Dominic Sanders, the veteran safety who started his whole career at Georgia, he's got it in his hands on the back line of the end zone, and he can't quite control it, or that's going to wipe out points. That's yeah. going to change the game. Yes. And then – on the tying touchdown, you cannot tell me he was trying to hit Calvin Ridley. No, he, he was trying to hit, hit, hit Najee Harris. Harris was Najee's the back of the end going zone, across the back right, line, right? That was a, okay, a lucky so, break. so there's another one that could have been a disaster. Yep. And then the all time worst sack I think I've ever seen on the big stage was the one he took on first, first down that leaves him in second oh. and 26, and your kicker has gone completely yeah. south. You're busted, man. You're out. I, I'm thinking. Even if he can hit two dump passes to get back 10 yards, do you think that kicker can make it no, from 50 yards? No, not, can't not, make not it in the funk he's in. No. And, and, and just when you thought from the freshman, like, took that sack, you're like, dude, that's a terrible sack. Yeah. I'm sure everybody's telling him, don't take a sack. Yeah. Don't take a sack. And guess what? Tua says, hey, hold my beer. I'm going to get 116 <laughs> yards yeah. on first down. Right. So now you Either wind up. A Hawaiian punch. So it's, it's think about this. It's second and twenty six, and you have a true freshman lined up as the solo receiver left, and you Correct. get trips right. Yes. And you have a corner who has started forty games at Georgia <laughs> in Malcolm Parrish. Correct. And you have a safety standing on the hash in Dominic Sanders, who started fifty three games. So you have two players who have never started a single game in their college careers at quarterback and at wideout. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you try a throw that any quarterback, that Joel Klatt learned from his father in high school, you cannot even think about making this throw up the rail against cover two because the safety's going to get there. He should be there. He, he should, should be right. there. He should. But you threw a rifle shot. Yeah. He threw a low tra trajectory you bullet. Get it up and down. You, you can't throw a rainbow. Nope. You got to throw a rope. Nope. And, right? And what's going to get lost, he threw that from the 48 yard line. And it was caught, caught on the goal line. He threw yeah. that on a line on a 48 line. yards. I mean, the arm strength, the effortless arm arm strength that he presented in that throw yeah. it was it was pretty remarkable and and those what I thought ended up biting Georgia was 
the atrocious sack that Tua took. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, at second and 26, we got this. We got this. Yeah, we got and it. guess what? Really safe defensive yeah. play call. Rather than lighten them up again on first down, they kind of brought it. They had hey, tight if, man coverage. If you coverage. sack him on second down, is, is it it's not over? It's probably over. It's Ooh. probably over. But they played safe. Yeah. They played cover two. I like and all it. of a sudden, you don't get a jam on the wider receiver. Nope. Well, so the Shannon coaching points on this. You brought out. up the corner and the safety. Here's the two coaching points, okay? The corner, his only job on that play is to get what's called a reroute yeah. on the wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Reroute. Didn't what, lay a hand you, on him. Is it because they're playing almost like prevent? Like the safety's just, only job is deeper than the deepest yeah. or wider than the widest. Yeah. Yeah. That's, those are the two That's coaching it. points, and, and here, both of them failed. The thing is, Skip, if there if there was another, if one was coming to the flat, he would hold the corner because yeah. you probably want a circus route in behind him. There's no one threatening the flat. No one. You reroute him and you keep sinking. Yeah. Safety at the snap of the ball, you get whipped. He's playing it like quarters because he stays on the hash. That's quarters coverage. If it's true too deep, at the snap of the ball, he got to spread. There's no way. That- I mean, the odds on that play are it should be intercepted. Oh, right? yeah. No doubt. So no it's, doubt. A, it's like a bad idea yes. that he pulls off on pure arm talent. Yes, I mean, arm talent. And, and, and by the way, there's only, Shannon, back me up on this. It, Two or three play calls on second and 26. Yeah. And four verticals is yeah. one of them. Yes, yeah. I mean, that's, 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 that's kind of the only four thing. Streaks. Four streaks. Four run. And then take the check down. That's Hopefully you got somebody that's cleared right. it out. You dump it down, skip. You get five to 10 yards. You come back. It's third and, third and 15, third and 18. You dump it down again. You bring shaky legs. You try to kick a field goal. <laughs> that's, Seriously. that's what you're supposed that. to do. They didn't want that. But I, 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 I want to go back to this, though, because I know you want to just talk about the game, but legacy was also at stake. Mm-hmm. Six national titles now that mm-hmm. tear, that ties the bear, yep. and he's doing it in the modern era, 85 scholarships. 85. Era where everybody's got facilities. Yep. A lot of teams have tradition. And Skip, I, integration. I think Nick Saban's the greatest college football coach that we've ever seen. Greatest. I'm going to save my ammo for this for later in the show. You ain't got you're, you're welcome to come back if you so choose, but but I'm I've got I'm lots, loaded too. lots of ammo. I'm bam, 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 bam. We don't have time to do it right now. You know what the whole nine you know? yards mean, Skip Baylor? Mm. That's nine yards of bullet. I've been saving up for you for this moment. <laughs> I, I've been waiting on this moment. I mean, you better check your ammunition. I think they're blanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he fired Blake. I don't know. What... I got this. No, you ain't got this. I got this. I got this. I, I could, I could debate both of you under the table and <laughs> no, you would no. lose badly. I mean, do you this. have like a? Remember those yeah. old those pop guns? Yeah. You know, like pop, pop. Mm. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show, and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed, or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.